we also want to thank Parkston Hall, What's on Wilmington, and all of you for showing up today. Um, we never know how these kind of things are going to work, but when a heart concert happens in Wilmington, it's a pretty rare thing. So um, I'm going to bring Carol up before I introduce our harpist and let Carol t tell you a little bit about why we're doing this event today. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I know many of you I've met through the work that I'm doing now, which is um, playing harp at the bedside in therapeutic music. Um, and I've been playing, goodness, for many years, um, sometimes as a volunteer with hospice. And then in the last couple of years, um, Davis has set up a therapeutic music program. So I'm able to play for not just hospice patients, but in all kinds of settings, um, because Davis has patients in rehab um, in various stages of the life, life stages. So the great need for bedside therapeutic music in this area um, comes from the fact that there's now one certified harpist myself, and I stay very busy. Um, I think it's a- But we think I, you do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but to tell you a little bit about the, the benefits of therapeutic music, just for those who don't know, aren't familiar with it, they're finding more and more that music, the sound that is in a room with a patient can affect the well-being of that patient. And, and that goes for all of us, really, in, in whatever state we are. But particularly with people who are in the healthcare settings, compromised in some way with pain, with anxiety, with fear, it is an, a, a remarkable thing to watch when that harp um, or the music of an acoustic instrument, sometimes the voice, um, creates a, 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 an area of calm. And what, what transpires is very visible. So I've had that experience and, and I had shared it with a few musician friends over the years. And now we have five wonderful musicians who've come forward to uh, work on their certification also. The certification programs, you can imagine, they could proliferate all over the country, and so there has to be some standardizing of what, is, what we need to know to be sure that we don't have sort of these you know, well-meaning musicians who get at the bedside and can potentially affect in maybe not such good ways. So the training programs are um, all accredited by the National Standards Board, which is an outside body that looks at our curriculum, uh, makes sure that we're meeting both the medical and the musical uh, requirements. <clears throat> the Music for Healing and Transition program is the program I chose. Um, it's the, the oldest of the training programs, and that is the one that we've been fortunate to get here in Wilmington. And so these five musicians are going through this training program and hopefully will emerge um, with the classes and with an in clinical um, practicum in a year or two, they'll be able to join me and be available. And um, you know, I can't say enough that when I leave Davis or the hospice care center, you know, I always feel like I want to stay because I'm leaving patients who, or families who are really wanting more music. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful to you for making it possible for these musicians to meet the needs of a wider range of people. Thank you very, very much for being here. <laughs> 